Do you have a leak and you need to shut the water off right now? This is the video you need to watch. If your meter is where you shut the water off, you're going to need to open it with a meter key and quickly put this wrench in on top of a valve and turn it. It should turn 90 degrees, 180 degrees, somewhere in there, depending on what brand it is, but that'll shut it off. Now, if you don't know where to shut the water off, that can be a problem. You need to look for like an oval shaped lid or maybe a rectangular lid out in the yard, normally out by the curb. And also it's normally towards one side of your property or the other. That way the city can branch off, come up and just split it into two. Now mine, mine's right in the middle of my front yard. Mine's a little bit different, but I normally see them one side or the other. If you don't have one there, or if it's covered up with grass, because that happens a lot, go up by your house and look in your flower bed. If you've put in a lot of mulch, you may have covered it up, but normally you'll find either a round or a rectangular lid that you can pop off and look down inside of it, and there's valves there. Guys, hopefully you're finding this information out before you have a flood. Waiting till your house is flooding to try to figure out where to shut the water off, that can be an expensive problem. Now, if you shut your water off up at the house in a valve box, I've got another video where I show you how to do both of these. Click on the link above, find out which one you have, shut that water off. Here's the deal. Shutting your water off now can save you a ton of money. So go do that. And then if you want to come back and I'll tell you the rest about it and why it's so important. So if you don't have one of these, man, you are up the creek. And here's the deal. You can get these down at your local box store. What this is, this end of the key actually goes in and turns to unlock the meter lid. Most good plumbers and most homeowners remove that lock once they have that undone. That way they never have to do that again. They can just go out and pry it open real quick. The other end of this is actually for a side mount. Some of the meters have a valve on the side where you stick this in, you turn it 90 degrees, and that shuts off the water. This is a great thing to have. It's a great thing to have in case your neighbor doesn't have one. You may want to help them one day. But the other thing to have, if you've got to shut it off at the meter, is a meter wrench. And what's good about this is literally you stand up straight, you stick this in on top of it, and you turn it, and that will shut the water off. We've got other videos where we actually show us doing that, but I wanna tell you why it's important. Number one, if you are not having an emergency right now, this is a great video to watch because you need to know how to do this. You need to know how to turn the water off, and to be honest, in my other videos, I tell you, look, teach everybody in your house how. Why is this important? You don't wanna wait till you've got a flood to try to figure out how to turn the water off. And I know this from growing up. The scariest thing any homeowner can have is water in the house, okay? And I mean tons of water. When I was a kid, I came home from middle school, walked in the front door and went around and stepped down into our living room. We had a garage that was converted, so it was like three inches lower, maybe four or six. I stepped down into water. Now, don't tell my mom, but that was pretty cool. But when I went and called my mom, she said, turn the water off. It's like, okay, I don't know how. I don't know that I would expect many middle kids, middle, yeah. I don't know that I would expect many middle school age children to know how to turn the water off, but that would have been a really good deal. One thing that I teach people all the time, anytime I go out there to houses is look, do you know how to turn the water off? It really is a very important thing to do. Most people know now because they know the damages that water can cause, but knowing how to do that can save you tens of thousands of dollars. Think about it. If you've got a water heater in the attic and it ruptures and it's flooding and you don't know how to turn that water off, it's gonna be a problem. Now, luckily, water heaters are supposed to have a valve at it. So you should be able to just go up, grab the ball valve and turn it off. And also, if you're lucky, you've got a valve box right in front of your house and you can go out and just pull the lid off, stick your hand in there, turn that valve 90 degrees and that should kill the water to your house. This is something you need to know how to do. If you've got a teenage kid that takes way too long of hot showers, just go out there and turn the water off. They'll quit real quick. Or if you really want to upset them, go to the water heater, turn the hot water off. Let them stand in the cold shower for a minute. They'll be finished with what they were doing. Then they'll get out. I'm just saying. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this video helps you. And I really hope you're not having a flood right now because if you listen to all this all the way through, now you're going to be mad at me. But remember, I told you in the beginning how to do it. So you probably should have already done it. Hope you like this. If you do, please share it with somebody that you think this information can help. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.